Hello and happy Monday and welcome to another installment of the fabulous Azure Advent Calendar. First of all, my thanks and your thanks to Gregor and Richard for first coming up with the idea and then having the tenacity to see it through. Organising 25 days of content is no mean feat and my Santa hat goes off to them for managing it. So in this video I'm going to try and unfuddle some of the thinking around hybrid cloud and to try and settle some thoughts in your head and turn hybrid from being the poor cousin of cloud into an integral part of any cloud admin's arsenal. But first, because it's Christmas, let's have a hybrid Christmas poem. It's the week before Christmas and all through the cloud, many workloads are running, at least those are allowed. For though all the power of Azure is there, many apps have to stay back on-prem, that's not fair. While modern cloud apps get to scale out en masse, defined it impotently in IaaS and PaaS, our heritage workloads are often a mess, not ready at all to move to AKS. Well, tonight in my t-shirt from conference past, I'll explore what products we now have amassed. We'll map out the future from cloud to the edge. On-premises, really, my friends, isn't dead. On the contrary, back from the cloud, now we ride, carried at pace with the swell of the tide. But not so we leave it or scrap all we know. Instead, to extend it to where it can't go. For though cloud is awesome, with wondrous abilities, it isn't just found in Satch's facilities. Sometimes you need to deploy at the edge, and Azure can solve this with hybrid, we pledge. So with Arc, Hub and Edge, and yes, HCI, let's now do on-prem what we can in the sky. We'll see where they fit, and together we'll find, in a hybrid cloud world, no apps left behind. One thing that is really important to be aware of when discussing hybrid cloud with Microsoft Azure is that hybrid isn't an afterthought in Azure, it's an integral design choice. Azure has always been designed to be a hybrid cloud platform right from its inception, and this really goes back to Microsoft's heritage in the enterprise IT market. They didn't just grow up in the public cloud world, they grew up in the on-premises world, and extending on-prem to the cloud and the cloud to on-prem has always been an integral design choice in the Azure ecosystem. This is made up of a number of different products so in a number of different families. We have the Azure Stack family, we have the Azure Arc family, the Azure IoT family, and then a whole host of different tools and capabilities, some within applications, some inherent in Azure itself, like Azure Active Directory, which really surround and penetrate and hold the Azure ecosystem together. The first of these that we're going to look at is the Azure Stack family. Up until recently, Azure Stack was a one product, but now it's grown and evolved into a whole family in its own right. First of all, on the left-hand side, we have Azure Stack HCI, which is our hyper-converged solution, which is really designed for modernizing the infrastructure around existing traditional virtualization applications. So this is great for uh, high-performance SQL workloads or any high-performance workload, really. It's great for consolidating and improving infrastructure on-premises. It's great for remote and branch office environments. It's great for uh, really taking your existing workloads and putting them into a modern, scalable, hyper-converged infrastructure. We can also extend Azure Stack HCI to public Azure by taking advantage of some public Azure services, for example, um, Azure Backup or Azure Site Recovery or uh, Azure Monitoring or uh, Azure Update Manager or a whole host of Azure services which can extend and enhance Azure Stack HCI to be even more powerful Azure hyperconverged platform on-premises of choice. Alongside that, we have Azure Stack Hub, which is our cloud-native integrated system. This is not a build-it-yourself composable infrastructure like you would do with Azure Stack HCI. This is an integrated system. This is designed to be an appliance that you deploy on-premises to bring Azure on-premises. This can be operated in either connected or disconnected scenarios, and this really brings the power of Azure to your facilities, or in fact, to any remote location where you can deliver power to it. This brings you both IaaS and PaaS capabilities on-premises for data sovereignty, for regulatory compliance, for uh, bandwidth constraint or latency constraint, or a number of other different scenarios, which we'll discuss in more uh, detail later. This is also a fantastic platform for delivering application modernization on-premises, but often forgotten is also operations modernization on-premises. The way that we run operations in public Azure is significantly different to how we run operations in a traditional on-premises world. And what we're really doing with Azure Stack Hub is taking that operations model of Azure and also delivering that on-premises. The third member of the family is Azure Stack Edge. Azure Stack Edge is a one-new appliance which is 
bought from the, the Azure portal, you go into the Azure portal and you say, I want an Azure Stack Edge, Microsoft will ship it to you. And on it, you can do things like machine learning at the edge. You can do uh, edge inferencing of video and image data, for example. We're also getting the ability to run some virtual machines and container workloads in Azure Stack Edge in the near future as well, as well as the ability to cluster multiple Azure Stack Edges for resiliency. This allows you to do things like intelligent network data transfer to the cloud. So let's imagine that you have a factory with 200 4K cameras constantly streaming data. Do you want all that data to be going up to public Azure to be processed, sucking up all of your valuable bandwidth? No, probably not. What you want to do is have that processed at the edge using something like Azure Stack Edge or a combination of Azure Stack Hub and Azure Stack Edge to really process that huge rich uh, data set pull out what's useful and interesting, and then maybe send a subset of that up to public Azure, saving our precious bandwidth in the process. What we often find though, is that when you're looking to deliver a solution which requires Azure Stack Hub or Azure Stack Edge, or indeed Azure, you have often going through the architectural process, ask yourself, what am I trying to achieve? What am I wanting to do? And really the answer is never one or the other or the other. It's a combination of all these products to deliver different features and capabilities depending on your needs. So on the left-hand side, you may find that for an IoT solution, all you need is public Azure and Azure IoT. And that's all, and so IoT devices at the edge, and that's all that you need. You may not need to touch Azure Stack Edge or Azure Stack Hub at all. On the far right-hand side though, you may have a scenario where you actually do need to use all of these solutions in tandem. And if you look through these different composable infrastructure solutions here, what you'll find is that there aren't any deep dependencies here on public Azure. If you have a situation where you need to deploy at the edge where you have no connectivity to Azure at all, you can still get all the benefit of this edge ecosystem, including things like IoT Hub and Event Hubs and Stream Analytics and Azure App Service and so on, running at the edge in Azure Stack Hub without actually ever having to touch Azure. This is designed to operate in any scenario, not just a subset of scenarios. The most common use cases that we see for hybrid though in the wild are for disconnected solutions. So when you really physically have no capability to connect to public Azure and you cannot connect to it, then you want to bring Azure on premises or Azure to the edge and run it where you want to, where you need to. This is because you're latency constrained or bandwidth constrained or because you're at the bottom of the ocean in a submarine or for some other reason that you just cannot use public Azure. We then have Azure applications to meet varied regulations and I'm very clear on this being Azure applications, not just cloud applications. This is when you want to run Azure applications, but you have specific regulatory compliance constraints that you can't get around that don't allow you to use public Azure. You're able to run those Azure applications on premises now. We also have the ability to use the Azure application model on premises. And this isn't necessarily because you can't connect to Azure or because you have regulatory constraint. There's some other reason that's stopping you from being able to uh, use public Azure. So an example could be uh, a publishing company who's sending terabytes of data from their production systems to their printing presses every day. And if they had to pull that data down from public Azure, it would be an exorbitant fee for the bandwidth egress charges from public Azure. And so they deploy this on premises instead because they want to use Azure services, but they don't have to worry about the bandwidth egress charges here. There are all sorts of reasons for running an Azure application model on premises. For example, maybe you have a mainframe or a giant system of record that is just too big to move to the public cloud, but you still want to modern build modern applications around that data set. Well, you can deploy Azure Stack Hub into the same facilities attaches that LAN speed to that data set and start building modern applications in an Azure environment in the same facilities as that system of record that cannot move to public Azure. And then finally, we have edge solutions and edge solutions are where you want to push Azure services more and more and more to the edge because you're trying to do things like real-time analytics or uh, IoT scenarios or things out at the edge that you just cannot wait for data to go back to Azure and uh, return to the edge uh, in order to achieve. Now, what I wanted to do really was build a, a Christmas analogy around Azure and Azure Stack Hub and think, how can we build an analogy around Azure and the world of hybrid computing uh, in a Christmassy way? So first of all, I thought, well, it's Christmas, so we've got a nice snowy landscape here. And Azure exists in the cloud, so why don't we put Azure up in the cloud there at the pearly gates? And then 
the hybrid ecosystem is a holy trinity which is delivered on premises and because uh, this is on premises we need to put a building around it and then we surround this with the glory of azure arc and then i realized oh my god i'm probably going to offend someone here so we should just scrap this uh, and i'll try and come back to this later and come up with a different analogy later uh, apologies for that next what i want us to think about is actually if you're deploying an application or deploying a workload or you're managing a workload in your mind in a hybrid world it's often important to separate the management plane from the workload in your mind if we're thinking through some of the reasons that you want to use hybrid environments things like real-time analytics and compliance and iot or latency constraints or even bandwidth constraints a lot of these uh, scenarios here don't require the management plane to also be pushed to the edge as well oftentimes you can have the management plane running in public azure and your workload running on premises and splitting out uh, in that way opens up a whole host of new scenarios that wouldn't otherwise be possible i also think it's really important to always be looking to elevate your perspective in any infrastructure or any application or any workload that you're managing this is one of the most powerful things that azure does for you if you look down through azure there is Azure hardware and Microsoft facilities, but you don't have to care about how that hardware is designed or maintained or how it's uh, put together. Microsoft takes care of all that for you. They run a software defined infrastructure on top of that hardware, but again, you never see it, you don't touch it. This is managed for you and delivered to you as a service. We have Azure Resource Manager, which you take advantage of, but absolutely you do not deploy or manage or update this. This is the secret sauce of Azure, which allows us to uh, really deliver scalable, automatable solutions within Azure, but it is not something that you ever have to worry about how it's deployed. The Azure services that Microsoft lights up across many, many different data centers around the world is, again, not something that you have to care about how they're managed or delivered behind the scenes. You just have to say, I want to use IoT Hub, and off you go and start using it. How it's deployed and delivered and managed behind the scenes is entirely delivered as a service by Microsoft. And that's delivered by Microsoft admins, and in fact, the whole of this is managed behind the scenes by Microsoft personnel and Microsoft administrators, which, again, frees up your time to focus on your workloads. We also have built-in inherent security across the entire board here. And this security, the administration, all these services being designed and delivered to you as a service gives you the time to manage your workloads. And all your time and all your effort can go into managing your workloads. And actually, this is really important in Azure because there's such a plethora of services available. The only time that you're able to start to take advantage of all these different services is if you don't have to care about everything that goes on underneath. This is the power of cloud. This is the power of Azure. And this is what we deliver with Azure Stack Hub as well, for the most part. Right from the bottom up, again, you don't have to design this hardware. This is a co-engineered, validated solution designed between Microsoft and your preferred OEM, for example, Dell EMC. On top of that, we run a software-defined infrastructure. This is Hyper-V 2019 and Software-Defined Networking 2019 and Storage Spaces Direct 2019, but you never see it. You don't care about it. You're never going to fire up Hyper-V Manager or Windows Admin Center and connect into this and manage Hyper-V or Storage Spaces Direct. You don't have to design these. You don't have to take care of these. You don't have to manage these. Azure Stack Hub does that for you. Just as in public Azure, we have Azure Resource Manager brought on premises. And on top of that, we have a subset of Azure services running on premises as well, whether that's the core Azure IaaS features or Azure App Service or Azure IoT Hub or Stream Analytics coming or uh, WVD coming or a whole host of other different Azure services running in your premises. Now, because this is running in your premises, there are some tasks that you'll have to do, which Microsoft takes care of in Microsoft data centers. So there's a small subset of tasks for your admins here, things like swapping out uh, failed disks or choosing when to apply updates or doing capacity management some of these tasks that microsoft's responsible for you take on the responsibility for but in comparison to managing a, a large-scale cloud on premises normally what you have to do is an absolutely de minimis amount uh, compared to a traditional virtualization platform or a traditional cloud platform on premises so what this gives you is the ability to delineate what you care about and what is taken care of for you all the rest of this should fade away into the background so that you can focus on what matters to you, which is your workloads. It's what delivers the most value to your company. This is where you should be putting all your time and energy, and this is what Azure and Azure Stack Hub give to you. So an example of where we can both split the management and data plane and elevate our perspective is the forthcoming Windows Virtual Desktop on Azure Stack Hub service. 
This is made possible because we have Azure IaaS running inside Azure Stack Hub, and on top of that, we have Azure Resource Manager because we have the same ARM model on premises as we have in Public Azure. It's very easy for us to take the Windows Virtual Desktop Management features in Public Azure and project those down on premises to run WVD workloads on premises. Now, why would I want to do that? Well, first of all, because we keep the WVD management in public Azure, it means that we're not wasting space inside the Azure Stack Hub running those services just to enable management. We can keep that in public Azure and put the valuable workloads into the, into the Azure Stack Hub itself. This allows us to connect our remote desktop clients at LAN speed with LAN latencies to those workloads. So this solves a few problems. This solves bandwidth or latency challenged applications, but actually it also solves a lot of data comp uh, regulatory compliance uh, requirements as well. Because oftentimes our regulatory compliance requirement is not about the management of a workload, it's about where the data of that workload sits. In this case, the data always sits within your, your firewall, all within your boundaries. It never traverses that firewall into public Azure. The management sits in Azure, but your data sits on premises. So from a sovereignty, compliance, bandwidth, and latency challenge perspective, all of these can be solved by WVD on Azure Stack Hub. So coming back to our analogy, what could be more Christmassy, I thought, than good old Santa Claus? And here we see uh, Santa sitting behind his uh, reindeer, with the reindeer representing public Azure, and his sack representing the workloads that he's driving around. Um, and this, for the most part, is an absolutely perfect solution here. But wait, what's this? We see a foggy environment appearing. Unfortunately, we know that reindeer cannot traverse foggy environments. This is just not something that they're capable of doing. In any normal conditions, in 99% of situations reindeer encounter, they are able to go wherever they need to and deliver the value to Santa that he wants delivered from them. But they've found a scenario where they just cannot go. In these fog computing scenarios, these edge scenarios, Public cloud just cannot go to them, reindeer cannot traverse them, so what do we need to do? We need to bring in our good friend Rudolph. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer is able to navigate the fog computing, and for me this is actually a wonderful analogy because the whole point of the story of Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer is that the other reindeer mocked and laughed at him and saw no purpose in him until they did. They la laughed at him and mocked him because they didn't think that he was... Uh, useful they didn't think that there was any point in him they thought that they could achieve everything they needed to on their own until they found a scenario which they couldn't do on their own and they needed rudolph and actually this so it is with azure and azure stack hub as well so often i'll talk to azure admins who just laugh and say why would i ever need azure stack hub i have azure and yes that's true and if you can use azure you should always use azure but you will find scenarios where you can't and for those scenarios Always remember our good friend Rudolph here, guiding the way through fog. Azure Stack Hub, just like Rudolph, will go down in history. Thank you very much for listening. I hope this was entertaining. I hope it was informative. Have a very Merry Christmas, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the Azure Advent Calendar.